six V3 nose cones just appeared at Starbase overnight. The same industry experts who called Musk's production timeline impossible are now scrambling to explain how SpaceX did it. Here's what nobody expected. While Boeing takes years to build one rocket, SpaceX manufactured six advanced nose cones simultaneously. S39 through S44 each represent breakthrough technology that solves every major V1 and V2 failure. But here's the kicker. These aren't just prototypes. They're production models with revolutionary heat shields and reinforced structures ready for actual missions. The manufacturing rate everyone said was fantasy? It's happening right now. What does this mean for the future of space? One starship per day by 2026. While competitors struggle with single builds, SpaceX is about to flood the market. Will traditional aerospace survive this disruption? Let's dive right in. So what exactly happened at Starbase that night? Picture this scenario. Aerospace analysts wake up to photos showing six identical nose cones lined up in perfect formation. Not prototypes, not test models. Production-ready V3 components numbered S39 through S44. But here's where it gets strange. These nose cones appeared faster than anyone thought possible. Remember, Boeing takes 18 months to build a single rocket. Lockheed Martin needs years for one satellite. Yet somehow, SpaceX manufactured six advanced spacecraft components simultaneously. The engineering community went silent. How do you explain production rates that shouldn't exist? The answer lies in something SpaceX calls the Star Factory. While competitors still hand-build rockets like medieval craftsmen, Musk created the world's first true mass production space facility. Think of it like this. Traditional aerospace works like a custom car shop. One engineer, one rocket, months of individual assembly. The Star Factory, it's Tesla's Gigafactory model applied to spacecraft. Multiple stations, each building specific components, all running simultaneously. But that's just the beginning. The real breakthrough comes from vertical integration. Instead of waiting months for suppliers, SpaceX builds everything in-house, engines, fuel tanks, electronics, even the specialized steel alloys. When you control every component, you control the timeline. Yet something doesn't add up. Even with perfect manufacturing, six nose cones in weeks? The math seemed impossible until we discovered the hidden factor. Here's what nobody saw coming. SpaceX didn't just build one production line. They built multiple parallel lines, each capable of independent operation. While the world watched test flights, engineers were secretly perfecting mass production. The numbers tell the story. V1 Starship took over two years to produce eight vehicles. V2 managed only five prototypes. But V3? Six nose cones in a matter of weeks. With the full vehicles following close behind. Consider what this means. Each Starship costs roughly $100 million in materials and labor. SpaceX just demonstrated they can manufacture $600 million worth of spacecraft components faster than competitors can design a single rocket. But why the sudden acceleration? The answer reveals SpaceX's true strategy. SpaceX needs 25 Starship flights from Starbase alone in 2026. 25. That's more launches than most countries achieve in a decade. To meet this target, they need a fleet of ready vehicles. Here's the engineering challenge. Each starship can only fly a limited number of times before major refurbishment. Even with perfect reusability, you need multiple vehicles to maintain a high flight rate. The solution? Build them faster than they wear out. The V3 production surge makes perfect sense now. SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're building a sustainable launch ecosystem. Six nose cones today. Complete vehicles by September. Operational fleet by year's end. But the real shock comes when you realize what this enables. Remember that mysterious construction at Starbase? The demolished buildings? The new foundations? The massive steel frameworks rising from the ground? That's Gigabay, a facility designed to stack 10 to 15 starships simultaneously. Compare this to current capacity. Megabay two handles, maybe five vehicles at once. Gigabay multiplies that by three. When operational in 2026, SpaceX could theoretically assemble 180 starships per year. 
The implications are staggering. NASA's entire space shuttle program produced five operational vehicles over 30 years. SpaceX plans to build 180 starships in 12 months. Yet even this isn't the end goal. Musk's ultimate target? One starship per day, 365 spacecraft annually, more than the entire global space industry has ever produced. But here's what nobody's talking about. Why now? Why the sudden production surge? The answer lies in a classified timeline most people don't know about. SpaceX has internal deadlines that go far beyond public announcements. The Artemis Moon Program, Mars Mission Windows, military contracts, commercial satellite deployments, all require massive vehicle availability. The V3 production explosion isn't random. It's synchronized with mission requirements we haven't seen yet. Consider the timing. V3 debuts second half of 2025. Mars launch window opens in 2026. Artemis needs lunar vehicles by 2027. Everything aligns perfectly if you have enough starships. Here's another piece of the puzzle. Raptor 3 engines. While everyone focused on the nose cones, SpaceX quietly revolutionized engine production. Raptor 2 achieved one engine per day. Raptor 3 simplified design targets multiple engines daily. Do the math. Each Starship needs 33 engines. At current production rates, SpaceX could theoretically build engines for one complete vehicle every two weeks. The bottleneck isn't engines anymore. It's assembly capacity. This creates a fascinating problem. What happens when you can produce engines faster than you can build rockets to put them in? Meanwhile, SpaceX's Florida operations tell another story. Launch Complex 39. A targets 44 flights annually. SLC-37 aims for 76 launches per year. Combined, that's 120 Starship flights from Florida alone. Add Starbase's 25 flights, and you get 145 annual launches, each requiring multiple vehicles for sustainable operations. The production surge isn't just about building rockets, it's about supporting an unprecedented launch cadence. But here's the twist. Even 145 flights might not be enough for SpaceX's real plans. V3 isn't just about manufacturing speed. Internal redesigns maximize payload capacity, relocated header tanks, optimized propellant lines, expanded cargo compartments. Every change increases mission capability. This matters because SpaceX's future depends on payload economics. The more cargo per flight, the lower the cost per kilogram to orbit. V3's enhanced capacity could make space access genuinely affordable for the first time in history. Think about the implications. Current satellites cost millions, partly because launch expenses are so high. If SpaceX can reduce launch costs by 90%, satellite design changes completely. Cheaper launches enable bigger satellites, more frequent replacements, entirely new mission types, while SpaceX builds six nose cones simultaneously, what are competitors doing? Blue Origin's new Glenn has been almost ready for years. ULA's Vulcan manages handful of flights annually. European rockets face constant delays. The gap isn't just widening, it's becoming unbridgeable. By the time competitors master reusable rockets, SpaceX will be producing them like cars. The aerospace industry faces a Nokia moment, adapt or disappear. But let's talk about what makes V3 actually better. Those new weld patterns aren't just cosmetic. They represent structural improvements that solve heat shield attachment problems plaguing earlier versions. V2 vehicles lost tiles during flight. V3's mechanical pin system holds shields in place even under extreme stress. The difference between mission success and catastrophic failure often comes down to details this small. The larger lift point? That's for handling heavier, more complex vehicles. V3 isn't just faster to build, it's built to handle missions V2 couldn't attempt. Here's what's truly remarkable. SpaceX compressed a typical five-year development cycle into 18 months. From V2's first flight to V3 nose cone production, the timeline defies industry norms. Traditional aerospace development follows predictable patterns. Design, test, redesign, test again, 
may be built if everything works. SpaceX builds while designing, tests while building, and iterates faster than competitors can plan. This approach terrifies established companies. How do you compete with an organization that treats rocket development like software updates? The six nose cones send a message beyond technical capability. They demonstrate SpaceX's confidence in V3 design. You don't mass produce vehicles unless you're certain they'll work. This psychological impact affects everything from investor confidence to employee morale to competitor strategy. When your rival casually manufactures six spacecraft components while you struggle with one, it changes the entire competitive dynamic. Behind every nose cone lies a transformed supply chain. SpaceX doesn't just build rockets faster, they've reinvented how space components are manufactured, tested, and assembled. Vertical integration means control over every variable. When delays occur, they're internal decisions, not external dependencies. This flexibility enables the rapid iteration cycles that make V3 possible. The question becomes, can anyone else replicate this approach? Or is SpaceX's manufacturing advantage now permanently insurmountable? All this production capability serves one ultimate goal, making humanity multiplanetary. Every nose cone, every engine, every launch pad contributes to Mars colonization. The V3 surge isn't just about better rockets. It's about building the infrastructure for species survival. When you frame it that way, the impossible production rates make perfect sense. If you're racing to establish a backup civilization, you can't afford to build one rocket at a time. This brings us to the ultimate question. What happens to aerospace when one company can produce rockets faster than everyone else combined? The answer isn't just about SpaceX winning. It's about fundamentally changing how we access space. Traditional launch providers charge $10,000 per kilogram to orbit. SpaceX's current rates are already 90% lower. With V3 production scaling up, costs could drop even further. We're talking about making space access as routine as air travel. But the real disruption comes from availability. When you have hundreds of starships ready to fly, you can attempt missions that were previously impossible. Massive space stations, lunar mining operations, Mars colonies, all become feasible when launch capacity isn't the limiting factor. Remember our title, Elon Musk Exposed, Why V3 Manufacturing is Impossible. His answer, humiliated. The experts who called it impossible now face a simple reality. Six nose cones exist. They're real, they're production ready, and they're just the beginning. The impossible manufacturing timeline they mocked? It's happening right now. This isn't just about being wrong. It's about being so fundamentally wrong that it exposes how little traditional aerospace understood about modern manufacturing. While they debated whether V3 was feasible, SpaceX was already building it. What does this mean for the next five years? If SpaceX can maintain this production rate, they'll have more operational spacecraft than the rest of the world combined. The military implications alone are staggering. Consider this scenario. SpaceX builds 200 Starships by 2027. Even if each flies only once per year, that's 200 launches annually from a single company. The entire global space industry currently manages about 180 launches per year from all providers combined. We're witnessing the birth of space industrialization. The V3 production surge isn't just about rockets. It's about creating the infrastructure for humanity's expansion beyond Earth. Perhaps most importantly, the six nose cones represent a psychological victory. They prove that rapid space manufacturing isn't just possible, it's happening. The mental barrier that prevented others from attempting similar production rates has been shattered. This psychological shift changes everything. Other companies will now attempt their own manufacturing revolutions. The question is, can they move fast enough to remain relevant? The impossible V3 production timeline that humiliated experts isn't just a manufacturing achievement. It's a preview of humanity's spacefaring future. And SpaceX is writing the playbook. So here's what we've witnessed. Six nose cones that weren't supposed to exist. Production rates that couldn't happen. And an entire industry scrambling to explain how SpaceX made the impossible routine. But here's the deeper question that keeps me up at night. 
If one company can revolutionize space manufacturing this dramatically, what else have we been told is impossible that's actually just waiting for the right approach? The V3 surge isn't just about rockets. It's about proving that the limits we accept might just be limits we've chosen to accept. What do you think? Are we witnessing the birth of true space industrialization or just the beginning of something even bigger? Drop your thoughts below, because honestly, I think we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. And if you're as fascinated by this manufacturing revolution as I am, hit that subscribe button. Because next week, we're diving into SpaceX's Secret Raptor 3 production line. And the numbers will blow your mind. Until then, keep looking up. The impossible is happening right above us.